All right, hi everybody, welcome back. I have been thinking about this video for a long time, and I think it's important to talk about. And not only for caregivers who are going through, you know, seeing a loved one or a spouse go through, you know, something really challenging, but also just for people in general, for men specifically, and for parents, young parents. Um, so I want to talk about mental health and the importance behind taking care of yourself. <clears throat> so backtrack, before my wife was diagnosed with cancer, I like to tell people, or like I tell my therapist, I didn't have a lot of anxiety, stress. There was the normal life stresses, right? You know, paying the bills on time and making sure the kids are fed and the common work stress, but nothing that I've felt like this that I have currently, the anxieties and stresses that I'm carrying now and my family's carrying. So that's new. Um, so going back, never really felt the need to do any kind of mental health improvement. Now looking, hindsight's 2020. looking back, I'm sure there are many things I'm doing now that I could have done back then to improve my mental health even more. I don't think anybody's perfect. But ignorance is bliss and we, you know, were, uh, we still are, but we were a happy little family. There wasn't a lot of stress and, you know, we felt pretty good. Um, as soon as cancer hit, and as soon as my wife was diagnosed, and a lot of the roles shifted to me, I felt a lot of building up pressure. And that's the only way I can describe it when I describe my anxiety and my stress. It's kind of a wake up and instantly feel it in your gut and in your chest. And it's always at this kind of steady level. And something may happen to where it rises a little. And something may happen where it rises a little more. And then it only takes one tiny little thing to kind of set it off. Whether that's crying to my wife or needing a, a break or um, saying something to the kids that probably isn't the best thing that I should have said in that moment. There probably was a better parenting decision to make in that moment. And I always, well, I've learned that, that that tip, that thing that kind of sets it off is not what's stressing you out. It's all the things that are building up. So when we're talking about mental health, I'm going to start off by talking about mental health when you're a caregiver, because that's closest and nearest and dearest to my heart right now. When you're a caregiver, a lot of the things fall on you. A lot of the stresses fall on you. A lot of the responsibilities fall on you. And it, it's extremely important to take care of yourself. And many people have commented on my wife's channel and on my channel, what do you do to take care of yourself? And I thought, oh, that's that could be a video because I don't think I've talked about it. And so I, I have some key things that I do to take care of my mental health that I have learned through this cancer journey and things that I want to share to others and then things that I've heard and information that I've heard for anybody else who's struggling with just mental health in general. So one of the key things that I started to do when my wife was diagnosed, I felt all the pressure building up and I said, okay, I think this is when you're supposed to reach out to a therapist. And that's what I saw in movies, that's what I heard from people, so I thought, well, why not? So I reached out and I found a therapist. And my insurance company just kind of assigned one to me, here you go, and good luck. So I was a broken mess uh, when my wife was diagnosed, so I kind of just met this person and just spilled it all out there. And I loved my therapist. Um, they they were a, a great individual, great tips, great advice, kind, supportive, um, all the things you want 
at least in my opinion, from a therapist who's there to support you. Uh, life happens and scheduling issues and whatever happens and I found out that we couldn't we couldn't keep meeting and so I made the mistake of allowing it's kind of like that feeling of you feel like you've got things under control you've done a lot of therapy or you've done a lot of mental health work and you feel like I'm good I'm 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 under control but you know I've learned and a lot of people have shared this with me that you're never you're never um, immune to learning more. You can always learn more. You can always add more to your toolbox. So I made the mistake of kind of letting therapy lapse and taking a long break. And I felt myself with that tension building up and up and up and up and up. And then most recently, the new stresses that came were leaving my caregiver role, right? That was really hard for me. Most of you know that I had eight months where I was at home with my wife taking care of her while we were going through the scariest part of our journey so far and I was the full-time caregiver full-time dad at home taking care of my wife and then I had to just do a huge shift and go back to the workplace and leave my wife at home and leave my kids at home and that was a huge shift and it was a struggle not so much the work aspect but leaving my my family um, at home and then you know there's the stresses of my wife's treatment plan always kind of being on edge we're always kind of, you know, waiting for that next scan and seeing what's going to happen next. We never really have a good grip. We feel good, but it is a stressful time. And so those stresses are always in the back of my mind. And then normal parent stresses come in and normal work stresses come in. And that's when we see, you know, my last therapist, said that's when we see the, the, the water starting to almost boil over. So um, I then, you know, through talking to my wife and some friends, it was important for me to go seek therapy again. Go find a therapist again. Um, obviously I had to find a new one because the one that I had before our schedules never met up and I had to just find someone that could work with my schedule now going back to work. So I did a quick phone call to my insurance company. Here's what I need and they hooked me up with one. I had a choice between three or four and I read their bios, which I think is important. If they have bios uh, when you're looking for a therapist, um, go ahead and read those because mine said that she dealt with uh, grieving, um, chronic illnesses, um, major life changes, different things like that. And I said, oh, that, that sounds like what we're going through as a family. Let's, let's book an appointment. So I uh, booked it, had my first appointment with that therapist uh, the day before my birthday, and it was one very productive hour. Uh, I loved it. And, you know, it's only been one session, and they say don't, don't make all your judgments based off of your, your first session, but the feeling that I got when talking to this therapist was, um, it was great. And I feel like this therapist will challenge me, will ask me questions that I wasn't asked by my previous one, will bring things up from, from different aspects of my life that might help me in relieving some of this anxiety and this stress that I'm constantly holding on to. So, loved it so far. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go once a week. Um, I think it's important to go as much as you and your therapist determine is necessary. Mine has said that once a week is necessary for now. And so we're going to do that. And so I see that that person uh, next week and we're going to go through more things that we talked about. And uh, so that, that's been important. So if you can seek therapy, whether you're, you know, whatever gender you are, whatever you, whatever, con you know, conception you have of therapy, try it. Really try it because it's so helpful. And no matter who you are, I think it's important to talk to someone who's not directly related or connected to whatever you're going through in life because they can bring an outside perspective and provide support that maybe you haven't heard. And then there's no feelings hurt or things that you're afraid to say because you're saying it to a random person who you're not going to talk to after the hour. You just let it all out and move on. So that's my first huge recommendation for anybody who is struggling and feeling the anxiety or the stress building see someone, talk to someone, talk to a professional. Uh, number two, my insurance company asked 
me if I was interested in seeking medication and I am not one who wants to take medication. Many of you know my wife is the same way. We're cut from the same cloth. I've never, you know, even when I have the common cold or I'm sick or whatever, I just, yeah, I don't want to take medicine. I'll, I'll get over it. So I'm not a, a big person who turns to medicine when I'm not feeling the best. And so it was a little hard for me, but seeing my wife and everything she's going through, she made me brave to say, yeah, sure. I'd like to be evaluated. Why not? Um, what's, what is the harm in seeking out more help? And so um, I met with a psychiatrist, psychiatrist? Yeah, those are the, yeah, yeah. And um, had a, a pretty short conversation with them, but good enough to where her and I kind of shared everything I was talking about. I had to feel a, a huge thing out before, so she kind of knew my background and what we were going through. And she started me on a medication that is daily and uh, it's just kind of starting small, is what she said, and then building my way up, because I've never taken medication, and because I don't have kind of huge panic attacks or anxiety attacks, or I'm not feeling depressed, she started me on just a small um, medication that helps relieve some anxiety and stress, and it's a daily medication. So, so far I haven't really felt it do anything, but she said it would take a while to get in your system and start working, but I am actively doing that and hoping that it helps. Um, and my therapist agreed that that uh, was a good thing to do along with some of these helping coping strategies that I'm talking about. So uh, therapy, seeking uh, medication, and number two, find something, um, if you're a caregiver, it's hard to find time for yourself. And everybody keeps saying, find time for yourself, and I always feel like, well, we only have this much time in a day, and in that day I want to see my kids and I want to take care of my wife. So uh, me, it, finding time for myself usually happens after the kids are in bed. Maybe even after my wife is in bed. And that's okay. It cuts in on the sleep, which I'll talk about, but you got to cut out a little bit of your day and find some time for yourself and do something in that time that you enjoy. So for me and what I talked about with my therapist, that is, um, we got a, we got a, an exercise bike and I'll show a clip of me on it. It's in the garage. And, um, that's just, I just do like a 30 to 45 minute session. I try to do it, uh, five times a week. It's going well. Um, I was, I was doing it five times a week. Let's say that, but I kind of, let that fall off and I'm trying to kind of get back on because it, it really is um, it's mentally healthy I, I love it I feel good when I'm on it it's good for my body it's good for my mind it's good for my stress and um, it's a good natural stress reliever and it's only 30 to 45 minutes that I do and so it's uh, easy to do and it's right here in our house we're lucky enough and fortunate enough to have one and so uh, it's uh, it's a great stress reliever so exercise if exercise is not your thing, um, walks, family walks, just getting fresh air is what I've read and learned from other therapists that getting fresh air is so powerful. You know, we're in our house or we're in our office or for me, we're in a school all day. Just stepping out and getting some fresh air is so powerful that when you're feeling anxiety build up or stress build up, just take a step outside um, and just breathe in the fresh air. Hopefully it's not raining. Hopefully it's not too hot. But get some fresh air. So exercise, therapy, medication. Um, and then one thing that I do is find something that besides exercise, like I said, some alone time, time for yourself, and then find something that just naturally kind of fits into your day that relieves a little stress. So as weird as it sounds, if you can zone out and do the dishes and it makes you feel good and it takes care of something in the house and it relieves your stress then do it carve out time and do it for me that would be walking our dog many of you know our dog flower um, our three-legged pug and um, we I got on this schedule of walking her late at night because we read that pugs struggle with um, heat because of their flaps and folds on their on their little faces 
So when we had her in the summertime and she needed to get all, all her energy, I couldn't walk her in the heat of the day. It gets to like 105 here sometimes. So I started walking her late at night. So the kids are in bed, I did my Peloton, and now um, it's time to walk the dog. And so I would walk her and it was really nice. It's that fresh air, little exercise, and I'm doing something that needs to be done, walk our dog, and taking care of my mental health. But, take it a step further, um, my thoughts would race a lot when I was outside walking her, and I kinda wanted to shut those down. And this was towards the beginning of diagnosis, when I came up with this strategy of um, looking up a podcast. I was never interested in podcasts ever, ever. Never listened to one, didn't care about them. And so I said, well, I don't really know the world of podcasts, but someone recommended it. And I said, okay, fine, I'll look one up. And I'm a, I'm a sports guy, I love watching sports, I love reading about sports, I love everything about sports. So I looked up podcasts on my favorite teams. And I found one for my favorite college football team, I found one for my favorite NFL team, and found one for my baseball team. Boom. Checks everything off. And so a lot of my podcasts published daily to where I have a new thing to listen to every single day. It's pretty amazing and it's super dang helpful to shut my mind off. When I'm listening to a podcast, I'm focused on that to where my mind's shut off. I'm not thinking about cancer. I'm not thinking about the stresses of the week. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just thinking about what I'm listening to. So I would recommend finding a podcast that you're interested in or an audiobook online or if you want to listen to like YouTube videos in the background I do that too find something that you can check out on zone out on that may even be like TV or YouTube something that you truly enjoy um, obviously you guys know my wife and I enjoy YouTube so we both have a lot of people we subscribe to that we enjoy with content that we like so that's another thing too but um, I'm getting off on a, on a tangent. So, what did we cover? We covered some healthy coping things, you know, taking time for yourself, exercise, carving time out in a day for, for you, even if it's something that has to be done, um, medication, therapy, and uh, here's a good one. Find something you truly enjoy. And I got permission from my therapist for this one. So. You guys know, you've watched us for a while, and my wife and my family, we love Disneyland. Um, it, it's our happy place, it makes us feel good, it's um, pretty close to us, and when we're there, we can kind of just tune out the world and just focus on having fun, eating food, spending time with family, and just taking in the fresh air and the beautiful sights and sounds that we love so much. So. I asked if that was an okay coping strategy or dealing with anxiety and stress, and my, and, and my therapist said, absolutely, go. If you have the means and you're lucky enough to and fortunate enough and you enjoy that and your family enjoys it, go. And so I told her, done, I will make sure we do that. So <laughs> we go all the time, we have passes, um, so it's affordable the times we go. We don't spend a lot of money each time we go and we just enjoy, even if it's for just two to three hours. We went on my birthday and we went for probably two and a half hours. That's it. And then we come home. So there's one and not everyone's going to enjoy what we enjoy. But if your thing is golfing, if your thing is bowling, if your thing is, I don't know, go do that thing because it's so good to release those good things in your body to make you feel good. And when you do something you enjoy, you feel better and you let some of that stress go. So do it, and don't avoid it, and don't put it off. And if that means, like for me, if that means it's an activity that you take people with you, then take them with you. Carve out time for something that you enjoy. So those are my coping strategies when dealing with stressful situations and mental health. And then just to kind of close this off, right? The importance of taking care of your mind and how important that is for your body. Right? Studies show that if your mind is not healthy, then all of this kind of follows along. And it's, it's, not, it's not easy to take care of the mind. 
depending on what you're going through in your life and what you're what you're experiencing, what you've experienced, I'm learning that too. Things in your past play a big role. But the importance is to try and actively take care of it with healthy strategies, right? We all know there's unhealthy things we could turn to when we're feeling stress and anxiety and fear and anger and avoid those and go for the things that are healthy and that help you and that make you feel good. And if other people look at you like, whoa, what are you doing? But it makes you feel good and it's something productive and it's something good, do it and don't turn back. And um, I want to stress the importance of a male, myself, um, going to therapy, taking anxiety medication, talking about your problems, crying, and seeking activities to help your mental health. It is so important in society, you know, it's changing, definitely, but men have been told to suck it up and get over it, don't cry, and take care of your family, that's your responsibility. And I've heard that before. Um, and that's okay, I agree, yeah, but you also have to take care of yourself. If you constantly bottle things up and just go forward, you kind of, I was turning into a person that I didn't like when I just pretended it's gonna be okay and don't worry and we don't cry and we'll get over this. You, you can't live life that way. You're gonna have so much pent up anxiety and stress. And so I think it's important for males to go seek help, even if it feels awkward, even if it's something you've never done, even if you're afraid, just go do it, seek help. Go seek a therapist, go talk to someone, let it out to where you get some of that that healthy advice and support rather than bottling it up. Because we all know bottling it up doesn't do anything for anybody. So, if you uh, happen to be um, a caregiver and watching this, definitely carve out some time for yourself. Uh, if you happen to be a male and watching this, uh, or you know someone in your life uh, who happens to be a man and struggles with mental health, suggest to them to, to just go get some quick help. And even if they're resistant to it, just, just kindly bring it up to them or ask them to go on a walk with you because it's the little things um, that help. And it's okay, not everyone's going to be comfortable with some of these strategies, but it's important to at least try. Just try. And it'll make a world of difference. I'm constantly working on myself. I'm constantly working on my feelings and my and my mental health and I can always improve I can always get better and I tell my kids that all the time when I'm having a stressful day and uh, maybe my wife is going through a pain spell or she's not feeling well I start feeling it build up because my wife's not doing well and I start to get a little panicky a little worried step away do one of those things that help eliminate something off of your list that's another one too that um, my therapist shared with me if there's something that can be eliminated, eliminate it, right? So I'll just give a quick example. If every day you gotta, you know, for me, you gotta clean and you gotta make sure the house is set up for the next day. What's the worst thing that could happen if you just don't clean the living room that night? Just skip it, like who cares? So the house is a little bit dirty. Um, things aren't as perfect as you'd like them to be. Just, Just skip it. And sometimes what I tell people who have severe anxiety and you're worried about if I don't do this, this will happen. We're con anxiety comes from the fear of the unknown. It's the fear of if I don't do this, what if this happens because of it? That hasn't happened yet. So you almost need to tell your brain that if that happens, it's okay. You know, if someone walks in tomorrow and the house is a little bit messy, that's okay. Life goes on, right? There are bigger things to worry about. So. If you can eliminate something and it and it won't make or break your day, throw it out. You know, if you normally do A, B, and C, throw out C sometimes. See if it helps. Um, that's a that's a important one. And I'll close it off with, um, I guess these are kind of a combo: meditation and sleep. So if you don't meditate and you feel uncomfortable with it. Uh, just close your eyes and kind of just be with yourself for five ten minutes out of a day and just focus on your breathing What I mean by meditate is is just just give yourself 
five to ten minutes of me time alone, no thinking. Try to shut off your mind and just focus on your breathing. It really helps. It either helps to do it first thing in the morning or the last thing before you go to bed because that's when your breathing is it's the best to kind of practice that. And then finally, get some sleep. So I know for me, as a parent and as a teacher and as a caregiver and as a husband, sleep's hard to come by most of the time. But make time for it. And if you're getting laid into the night trying to do things for the next day, things are going to have to wait. Get sleep. If you don't get enough sleep, all those other coping strategies from what I've learned are not going to happen. Your, your mental health is still going to decline because you're not getting enough sleep. The body can't function without sleep. So take care of yourself. Sleep. Follow some of those strategies. Go seek help. Talk to someone. Don't bottle it up. And don't be afraid of what society may think if you go seek out help or medication or therapy or whatever it is that may make you feel uncomfortable. Do not let someone tell you that you can't do it because you can and you need to to better yourself and to focus on yourself and to improve your mind and your body. So that is my spiel. I hope you got something from that today. Take care of yourself. And, you know, if my, uh, I'll give a little ode to my uh, brother-in-law, Jenny's brother. He said this the other day on the way to Disneyland, and I don't think he realized how powerful of a, of a statement he said. He said, if you can't love yourself, then you can't do anything else. Like, you can't be productive in any other part. I don't remember exactly what he said, but something like, how can you love and treat other, everybody else with kindness and goodness if you can't even love yourself? I was like, dang, Michael, that's, that's great. So, in the words of my brother-in-law, love yourself, take care of yourself, so you can spread that love and kindness to others, and you can be a better overall person. And remember, I am not perfect, nobody's perfect, and we need to constantly work on ourselves. We can always better ourselves. We can always be better parents, better people, better caregivers, whatever it is we're going through, we can always be a little bit better. And the key to that is, is taking care of our mind and our body. All right? So that's all I got for you today. Um, until next time. Bye, guys.